Hi, I'm Scott Lucas. This is today's EA Worldview on Syria. How Barack Obama lost his nerve. This is a story of a sudden change in American policy, which took place not over months or over weeks, within 24 hours. This is a story of how an American government said it was going to support an insurgency in opposition to at least contain President Assad has suddenly walked away from that. This is a story of how after more than two and a half years in the Syrian conflict, the U.S. is no longer involved in that conflict, but is on the sidelines. One, yes, President Obama lost his nerve. On August the 30th, Secretary of State John Kerry told reporters that the United States would not wait for the United Nations in pursuing airstrikes against Syria in response to an August 21st chemical weapons attack by the Assad regime. Kerry said that although the United States would like to have UN support, it was not necessary because of what effectively was a crime against humanity. Hours later, President Obama, after a walk in the Rose Garden of the White House, came in and told his advisors that there would not be airstrikes. Instead, he was going to go to Congress to seek approval for any limited military action. Despite the objections of his advisors, some of whom said that Congress might not approve even limited measures, some of whom said that this would make America look weak in the crisis, Obama persisted. Yet two weeks later, it appeared that Congress indeed might block even the narrow strikes in scope and duration. So it was an enemy of the United States, or at least a diplomatic foe, Russia, which got Obama out of a jam. It agreed with the U.S. that Syria would hand over its chemical weapons in exchange for the lifting of the threat of American airstrikes. Two. So what exactly happened after Obama lost his nerve? Obama losing his nerve meant that for the first part of September, both Russia and Syria, which had been on the defensive, could go on the offensive. For the Assad regime, that meant a military offensive, resuming attacks to push insurgents back, and not using chemical weapons, but using conventional weapons, bombarding towns and villages, both near Damascus and in the north of the country. For the Russians, it meant going on the diplomatic offensive. Moscow had been concerned immediately after the chemical weapons attacks that it might be connected to them. After all, it has supplied much of the Syrian regime's military equipment. Now, they could divert from that issue. They could say, maybe it was the insurgents who carried out the chemical assault. Maybe we'll never know. Wouldn't it be better to have a peaceful resolution? And they could eventually offer Washington a way out. Work with us on this plan for Syria to hand over its chemical weapon stocks, and we don't have to consider the messiness of who to blame. Instead, we can look forward to a future free from such conflict. Three. What does it all mean for the United States and for Syria? For the United States, it means perhaps a respite, no longer having to have this debate over military intervention, no longer having to go to the American public and saying perhaps that at least American air power, if not American troops, would be needed on the ground. It means that President Obama no longer has to face his military, who have been arguing for months against any type of intervention, including arms to the insurgents. It means that instead, he can draw a narrow red line. No chemical weapons means that everything is moving towards a resolution. But of course, that's not the entire story. The United States is no longer at the center of the political and military conflict in Syria. It is on the sidelines. Other countries may not be so happy with Washington, with the outcome. Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Qatar, other states who have all supported the opposition and the fight against Assad may continue to provide not only support, but weapons. And of course, Iran and Russia on the other side will not walk away from this, but will provide their support and weapons for Damascus. And it's not just a question of Syria. The United States looking weak in this conflict perhaps looks weak in other conflicts and other issues. It is no longer the superpower which is engaged with the Middle East. It is the less than superpower, 
which has decided that it should stand aside. But what next is not only for the United States. More importantly, it is for Syria and Syrians themselves. For despite the superficial headlines that if Assad hands over chemical weapon stocks, all is well, it won't be. This conflict will continue to be fought with other weapons, with aircraft that are dropping incendiary devices, barrel bombs, with missiles, with rockets, with artillery. Hundreds will continue to die each day. Thousands will continue to die each month. And there will be no resolution. Instead, the opening will be for the Assad regime to continue to press that never-ending offensive to reestablish its elusive control and for an insurgency which, with or without the United States, will continue to resist. I'm Scott Lucas. This has been EA's Worldview on Syria for today.